Hello, comic creators. Welcome back to the Comics Experience Podcast, a podcast where we talk to you about the business and creative aspects of being a professional comic creator. My name is Kamal Hennessy. The gentleman next to me, virtually, is Andy Schmidt. And today we are going to jump the gun a little bit. Um, we are, at the time of this recording, it is late September. So we have not officially gone into the horror season for Halloween depending on which retailer you ask, of course, because some of them are already selling their Halloween stuff. But over the past three or four months in the comic book industry, there has been a major influx of horror-related content, horror-related publishers, and horror-related themes kind of building up momentum in the comic book industry. Uh, early in the summer, ICV2 released a report that said, horror as a genre within comics was doing significantly better than other genres in the comic book industry, better than superheroes, better than um, science fiction, better than a lot of other things. And that was driven by several marquee books, like Something is Killing the Children and Department of Truth and things along those lines, which prompted it was part of a larger wave of horror-related material coming into the industry. You had, with the big two, you had the deceased line coming out of DC, you had Blood Hunt coming out of Marvel, IDW recently announced they're going to have a specific horror line. Oni Press, I believe, is reinvigorating the EC Comics line, which went away in the 1950s. James Tinian is releasing a his Tiny Onion line, which is going to be focusing on horror comics. So there are a lot of people, especially in the independent and kind of creator-owned sphere, moving into horror comics. Now, before I go any further, uh, Andy, are you are you a fan of the horror comic? Is this a good time for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like horror comics. I don't. Uh, I don't know that I, I'm not like only a horror comic fan but mm -hmm. um good horror comics are are really fun um i feel the same way about horror movies most of the horror movies i see i don't think are very good but the ones that are good are are really really good and i'm glad i've seen them and with comics i'm glad i've read them okay now have you actually edited or published quite a few horror comics with cex yeah um i didn't do a lot of horror in marvel i had i did things uh, that had horror elements and sort of the same at IDW. Like I did a very dark uh, GI Joe book called GI Joe Cobra. Mm -hmm. um, it was very dark, but I wouldn't say it was horror. Like it wasn't supernatural or anything. Um, this is more like thriller suspense type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, at CEX, we've done more horror. Um, and that was, that's a good segue into one of the reasons why that is, is because I think at least a lot of the comic creators I'd meet are really in, in into horror. Hmm. I think there's some some natural reasons for that. One is that the, the biggest one is that it's a visual medium, right? And so a lot of people like to draw fun monster type things and and you know that kind of thing. Um, you know, zombies are are apparently fun to draw for a lot of people. Um, it's the only crowd scene I know of that that where I know artists are like, yeah, I'll draw that. I'll draw a thousand zombies. That'll be great. But if you ask them to draw a thousand superheroes, they want to chop your head off. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I I think there are some natural reasons for that genre to be popular amongst uh, creators. So with CEX, which is all creator driven and creator owned comics, you know, we you just get more material that's horror related, and for that reason, you know, like the chunk of it that's good is is good, and so yeah, we do. We do a little bit more at CEX. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's not just the comic creators that are really into the horror genre. There's it's also clearly the fans because the fans are actually like the ICV2 article, which we will put in the show notes, pointed out. There's a lot more people buying horror as opposed to other relative to other types of genres. And that has it's not just a recent phenomenon. Historically, horror comics were one of the major genres of comic to have a lot of success in the 1940s, in the 1950s. 
horror comics along with romance comics and war comics and crime comics were big sellers far more than superhero comics. You only got the rise of a super, superhero comic with um, Seduction of the Innocent and the development of the Comics Code Authority, which made the restrictions on what kind of content could be in a comic so repressive that horror comics by definition could not exist. So a lot of the major horror publishers went out of business, leaving the landscape primarily just for superhero comics. So now that the comics code is gone and it has been gone for quite some time, I think you're seeing a natural resurgence of other genres other than superheroes coming into the market. My question to you is, if there's if horror is actually becoming more and more popular among the fans, but five or six major independent publishers all jump into the horror space at the same time, is there such a thing from this aspect of a comic creator, not a comics fan, is there such a thing as too much horror in your opinion? Um, I don't think there's a thing of, uh, uh, uh no, I don't think there's too much horror. Um, I don't think there's too much of any genre, right? I mean, it really is just, uh, is it good enough? Mm -hmm. And as there's more competition in the marketplace, the bar for for what what the audience is going to spend their money on is going to rise. As you have more and more good content, that bar keeps getting harder and harder to, to get over. If there's no horror in the marketplace and you put out a fairly mediocre horror book, it might do all right because there's the hunger for it. But mm -hmm. but if people are now having to sift through the horror, uh, you know, the horror genre, I mean, there comes a point for, for, any, for, for anybody where, you know, I maybe I can't buy a hundred horror books, but I can mm -hmm. buy 10 in a month, mm -hmm. you know, and so it will sort of self-regulate in that, in that sense. But, um, but right now, creators want to make it consumers are continuing to buy it um so at the moment it's good now i think to your point with the these announcements because there are even some some other ones that i don't think you even mentioned like it's gonna it's about to get a lot more competitive it seems it looks like um and then i think it'll be a lot harder to break through the noise you know what's <clears throat> you're gonna get more into well what makes your werewolf story the one mm -hmm. out of the 10 being released this month i want to read whereas before there might have been just one or two werewolf stories so it'll be it's that kind of thing is going to happen and so you know or big name creators are getting into it and they're going to suck up a lot of oxygen in the room so mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing will will happen um but i think as long as creators are improving their craft and are are making are making comics and and bringing them to market and then as long as there's a thirst for it or a hunger for it then it will continue to work yeah i think the key in what you said was as long as the creators are interested in making the comics because what i what we try to do in comics experience when we're having our q a sessions and we're talking to people about developing their publishing plans one of the things that I like to focus on is do not develop comics, do not plan to publish comics in a genre based on the trends that you see in the market. Because, well, that's several reasons for it. First of all, the production cycle of independent comics can be quite long. So if it takes you a year, two years, two and a half years to get a book out because you're just building up your infrastructure, you're just figuring out what your distribution channels are and all these other things, by the time you get that book out, it may the trend may be over. And now you have a book that is actually behind the times, not riding that wave. Second, if you're not into horror, or if you're not into any genre and the trends are moving in that direction, there is no point in you making that book because the profit margins as they are in comics are not necessarily going to justify you getting into something and spending months, perhaps years, perhaps decades, if the thing actually hits, being in a genre or working with a set of characters that you inherently don't like. Um, you don't want to be like, Let's say, for example, and this is probably going to be a bad example, let's say Stan Sakai 
hated anthropomorphic comics and he hated like samurais. Well, guess what? Now he's doing Usagi Ojimbo for 45 years and he can't get out of it because it's, you know, it's very, very popular, but deep down in his heart, he hates it. You don't want to be in that situation. So if you, right. if you love horror, then it doesn't make a difference how many horror books are out there. You should be making horror. And if you love horror, and if there's 300 books out there, you should still do it. But if you don't, then just don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And, and I think the other, well, I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Well, I no, I think that's that's the that's the key. I mean, if you're if you're an emerging or independent creator and you are you want to actually be part of that wave and you want to actually make sure your book gets out when it needs to get to get out, that's going to be a problem, especially in terms of, you know, creative production and things like that, that you're going to have to overcome so you don't right. miss that boat. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say is actually getting to market is the, mm -hmm. is the other thing. And that's true of any book, obviously. But when you have a rising wave, you you know, you want to try and you want to try and surf that wave, right? Mm -hmm. You want to catch the wave. Um, and that means getting to market faster. And so if you are, you know, if you're newer or you just don't have the, you know, the editorial bandwidth to really pay attention, then, you know, one of the things that we've found that has been really successful for people when they have something they want to get to market is they'll, they'll come to comics experience and we do a thing, we call it creative services on the website, um, you know, where we can, you know, take your script and we can find the artists, we review the artists with you, make sure they're, they're, you know, the styles or things that you like, and then we can, we can run that project for you to get it to professional standards to make sure it's print ready. A lot of books get hung up in, in two big areas. One is creative teams fall apart, mm -hmm. which shouldn't happen in this thing. And if it, and if it does, for whatever reason, we're there to, to figure out how to get it back on the tracks. Um, um, a lot of times creative creative uh, teams fall apart because of contract disputes, disagreements. They don't like working with each other. And one of the things that we do is we keep everything very professional and tactful. And, you know, we get, we can separate people in their corners. If we have to, which doesn't happen that often, but it happens um, with a lot of people making their own books. That happens a lot. And then the other places that uh, where, where books get tripped up is the, all the work is done. But when you go to assemble all the component pieces, the pencils, the inks, the colors, the letters, and the scripting and all that stuff, and it all comes together, they don't, the the files don't work together. Um, mm -hmm. And and they're actually not ready for, for print um, or digital delivery. And so that's the other thing we watch for is to make sure, we, you know, you're not going to run into those sorts of common pitfalls that that can be a huge problem that most people don't talk about that but it's it's true like you get to a point where you're like oh there's no bleed on this comic well that's mm -hmm. a problem it may not sound like a big problem but it is a problem um and so you know we 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 make sure that everything's up to those professional standards so that you got a really nice looking look at the end and we can bring stuff to market a little bit more more quickly usually the people can do it themselves um <clears throat> But that's just speaking to the point of a having somebody manage the project for you, which is nice and find creators to work with, but also getting it to market to make sure that you're surfing that wave. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much better to be surfing a wave than than swimming after it. Yeah, because that's yeah that that's no fun at all. Even though I'm not a surfer, so I've never actually caught a wave or you know followed after it. I have no idea. Um, I think. I think that's where we want to leave this idea that if you're a horror fan from a creative standpoint or a, you know, consumer standpoint, this is a good time to be in comics because there's a lot of horror that's a lot of good horror that's already out there, whether you're talking about Walking Dead or Something's Killing the Children or Infidel or any of those other books. And there seems to be a lot more coming through the pipeline. Uh, if you want to get into horror, this is a good time to do it. If you need to get in faster, you can go to creative services, you can ramp up your production. But if this is not something that you're actually excited about, especially from a professional creative standpoint, I would suggest not to pivot, to just you know keep doing what you're doing and wait for your wave to come when and if it actually comes. So or start the wave. If the exactly. wave doesn't happen, start the wave. Yeah. Start the wave. Um, so 
That's going to do it for this episode of the Comics Experience podcast. Comics Experience, uh, our community pro group is having our happy hour, our monthly happy hour that we have virtually. We're having that tomorrow. And we are going to be announcing the rest of our um, live events calendar for October, pre and post New York Comic Con in the coming weeks. So until then, I'm Gamal. He's Andy. Have fun with your comics.